This is a clip from the Canon Podcast. To hear the full episode and get access to exclusive benefits, head over to patreon.com forward slash the Canon Pod and sign up for just £3 a month. All right, transfer this to one side. We're going to end this quickly on something that uh, we have to get off our chest. We have been, been we have been disrespected in the media, especially in the UK. I mean, I I, I watched Mika Richards and uh, Roy Keane and uh, I don't know who else it was, uh, Jamie Carragher, talk about next year and title charge. And it took them a good six minutes to even mention Arsenal. And when they mentioned Arsenal, they started laughing about Arsenal. But Chelsea got a title charge, uh, you know, shout. United, for some reason, are already there as well. Liverpool are already back because they've signed the midfielders. It seems to be that people don't want to see Arsenal or don't believe Arsenal will fight for a title next year. Now, we're not talking Arsenal fans here. We're talking fans that don't support the club or people against the club, pundits of other teams. Are Arsenal being disrespected? And if so, you know, what have we got to do to prove them wrong, George? I mean, we are. It's just facts. We are. I mean, people not putting us in title conversations after having been the closest competing for the league. Let's ignore the fact that, you know, Arsenal have a transfer ban. They evidently will never reach their peak. And I'm sorry, guys, it's coming from our legends as well like it's actually look i know as fans you can't speak ill will of people that have done well but tony adams lee dixon martin keown these are guys that are on the circuit that aren't necessarily refuting these claims and tony adams just came out with an idea that we've reached our peak i'm sorry i respect you tony as a player that's quite frankly the most ridiculous assumption i've ever heard in my life give me the logic for how a pre-prime player is not going to improve I, i i don't get the logic and so for me part of it is because even our own are peddling this ridiculous narrative. Now, look, again, there's a conspiracy theorist in me that believes that I think that the older generation doesn't maybe want Mikel Arteta to succeed because, again, there have been dis- other interests there from our legends. You know, I even look at Thierry Henry, the relationships with Daniel Eck. There is a lot of stuff that has gone under the bridge with some of our legends that haven't been supportive of Mikel Arteta. And, It's those same people that have been quite critical of Arsenal's performance in the last 12 to 18 months. And you almost reach this peak where our performance is undeniable. And so they can't say much, but you can't go back and then rewrite history when you called him, in essence, a cone man. And I'm being a little bit facetious, but they weren't glowing in terms of Mikel Arteta's defense. And then switch immediately within six months to say that, you know, they're going to take you to the promised land. So I do think there's a bit of ego involved from our legends, but that creeps into the media when even your own legends aren't defending you. I mean, Rio Ferdinand puts Manchester United as title challengers every single season, no matter what the state of their club is. And when you don't have, in my opinion, legends that are more like a Gibraltar Silva that do that, it leads to media narrative. It does lead to a little bit of bias, but just to put it wrong right now, let's just talk facts about how wrong the entire narrative is. The second youngest team in the league, because I think Southampton have pipped us, you know, just just loosely, but now officially the youngest team in in the league with Southampton being relegated, having achieved um, 90-plus point potential um, with kind of a team right now that is not complete and is going after Rice, Caicedo, and these type of targets, you're telling me they won't improve? And I think the biggest defense that I've heard is, but rivals will improve. Yeah, I get rivals were improved, but so will Arsenal. Like, that's not logic that you can apply just to rivals and not to Arsenal. The way I look at it here, Vaz, is simply, you've got glasses that are filled with different levels of water. If reaching the Premier League is the top of the glass, by the way, and you've got rivals, Chelsea, United, Arsenal, maybe United are at a half cup, maybe Chelsea are at a third cup, but Arsenal are they have almost a cup? at the top. Yeah, I don't know <laughs> if they've got a cup. You know, maybe they're at the kitty table. They haven't been given a cup yet. So, like... Uh, Maybe they're waiting in line for a cup, but I mean, look, at the end of the day, you know, when you look at it, Newcastle and Arsenal have their cups filled higher than any of these other clubs. So this idea that these other traditional top six are going to improve, sure, no worries, but you've got to fill your cup a hell of a lot more and surpass the level of uh, Newcastle and Arsenal, who, by the way, aren't just going to stand still. We, we also are in line for more water. We haven't just left and started drinking. So I just, I don't, I don't get this ridiculous notion, and I and I do I don't want to dismiss the impact that Tony Adams and some of our legends have. Again, I love the players for what they've done, but some of their punditry is quite frankly bottom gutter, and I can't be more critical of than that. There there is a lack of a I'd say top Arsenal pundits, and I'm being honest. Like in terms of legends, you know you you know in terms of Sky, they've got their <laughs> they've got their people there. <laughs> We're not players, unfortunately. We ain't played the game. We don't know football. Hmm. 
But um, yeah, it, there is a lack of pundits. But also, you know, I'm a bit concerned as well. You know, Arsenal have got a very big transfer ban, aging squad. I don't know. I don't know how we are going to get better next year. You know, if we make the top half next year, like Chelsea, I mean, Chelsea going to do it this year. It's a difficult task. You see the youngest team in the league get relegated. I mean, will we survive? I don't know, Alex. What do you think? <laughs> I mean, it's nonsensical, isn't it? I mean, it's it's just... If you told me there was a, you know, on Sky Sky Bundesliga or whatever, Borussia, they, they, they were asking who can challenge Bayern Munich next season. And I don't know how long Bayern, uh, Borussia Dortmund spent at the top, but they're all going, yeah, Mainz and uh, Leipzig and whatever. And then someone at the very end goes, oh, what about Dortmund? And they all laughed at them. It's like, what is... There's, it doesn't make any sense. There's a... There's also a funny thing where I sort of think, who, if you actually watch the game, because ultimately these pundits as well, they don't actually watch Arsenal. And, and this is what's funny. When you put yourself in a position to say, call yourself an expert on something, you have to actually be an expert on it. Now, I would say, if someone, if someone put me in a position where to talk about football more generally, I'd be like, by the way, I don't watch them nearly enough. I don't watch enough United. I don't watch enough Liverpool. I don't watch enough Chelsea. What I do watch is Arsenal, and I can speak on Arsenal, and that's what I feel comfortable talking about. But I don't have that information. So it's mental that we go to Roy Keane, who's probably seen two Arsenal games this season, to tell us what we think about Arsenal. Makes no sense. And also, by the way, who were the teams that actually outclassed us this season? Actually dominated us? Brighton, probably at home in terms of outplayed us, Leeds in that period at Elling Road, but we're, you know, Brentford maybe, obviously, obviously Man City, but you're looking at very few. Football's played on grass, so it doesn't make sense, but I think there's three things, and I've just got a few, a few things here. So what's really going on? Because it doesn't actually logically work, work out. First thing is, I think there's a bit of a club at Arsenal at the moment. I think there's certain legends who are in the club, your righties, your David Siemens, and there's some who aren't like your Henri's and your Adams. And I think they're probably feeling a little bit jealous, probably. I think the other thing is ultimately narrative and we exist in capitalism, whether you like it or not, a lot of the, you know, the reason most things happen in, in these sort of spaces is because ultimately there's a, there's a, a monetary uh, component to it. And there's a more interesting narrative to, or it's a more profitable narrative ultimately for United to be back every season and for Chelsea to be back every season. Arsenal fans, they know, will engage on social media and be like, hey, what about us? You know, it's it's like basically they're looking at the numbers and seeing what's going on. They're probably not even consciously doing it and going, how do we how do we keep people interested? How do we get other fans riled up? And that oscillates all the time. So I think there's a, a part of that. And the final thing is this. These guys have existed throughout their entire lives from about eight years old, solely focused on their athletic abilities. Their entire formation of their personalities and their personas was formed through a time where they were focusing on their themselves, on getting it right at an elite competitive level. They are not necessarily people who are going to go, yeah, do you know what? I really got that wrong. Yeah, I was wrong about that. They're going to be very strong. They're going to be very um, convinced of themselves. They're going to believe that they are right because that's sort of the way that they had to be through, throughout their professional lives. And then they get to this point and you think you think there's any way on earth for the Roy Keane brand to function if he goes, do you know what? I didn't see it with Arsenal and I really respect Mikel Arteta. I think he's great. No, he knows what he has to do. He's a baby, you know, and make, the, make them laugh. <laughs> he, Micah knows he needs to laugh to keep, you know, they, they all know their brand and they all know what they need to do and they can't admit that they're wrong. So, you know, it frustrates me because it does drive a lot of narrative, but I also think there's so many factors outside of even their conscious control. I think it's just... It's just stupid. It makes no sense. I, I would love nothing more. Than, I'm not saying it's going to happen, of course, because he's not retiring tomorrow. But if Jacko retired and went to Sky Sports as a listen, mate, now, now let me talk about Arsenal and give you an insight of what's actually well, happening. So, something I would say, if you watch, uh, I, I think there'll be pundits from the, in the same way that Pep has kind of changed the manager game. I think there'll be the Pep kind of pundit, whoever's, you know, whether it's Gundogan on Sky Sports in 10 years, will get a different level of analysis because these guys understand the game to a different level than a Roy Keane or whatever. They were told, get stuck in, 4 4 2 stick, you know, stick it through. I'm not saying it was that simple, but the the Juego de Posicion and you know the 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 transition control, you know, all the things that the current media landscape that we are able to put across and the and the sort of current vernacular has been developed in the last twenty years. So, you know, I'm not saying those ideas didn't exist, but they weren't proliferated in the same way. So, you know, there are there will be an ability to put those ideas across in the future 
that we will look back on this era of punditry and be like, why are we letting this all of this narrative stuff happen? That's why, honestly, without blowing our own trumpet, that's why media stuff like this, people are actually interested in. Because the fan who wants to understand more about football understands that there is another level that we, even we are trying to understand ourselves and, and put it across. It's that thing of like, I, I, I played football in the 90s, I understand everything about it, and I'll never learn anything new. It's a crazy mindset. Sky, if you need a new pundit, I, I think Alex is, is giving himself a good little shout there. But, slagging uh, them off, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for checking out the Canon Podcast. To get full episodes and access to exclusive benefits, head over to patreon.com forward slash the Canon Pod and sign up for just £3 a month.